I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherp, and today I want to show you how you can make this great lilac painting with just a few cotton swabs. So get your paint, get your brushes, and your cotton swabs. Meet the easel right now. We're going to art up. Let's go. Here is a 9 by 12 canvas board. This is pre-gessoed and ready to paint. You don't need to do another thing to it. Over here, I have these really fun materials. I have cotton swabs that are bundled together in different sizes. I have big bundles and little bundles. I put several together and some loose ones. I've got a big brush. These are synthetic four acrylic painting. I have a number 30 bright, a number six bright, a number four round, and a small detail Teeny tiny one, this is three over zero. A thalo green, Prussian blue, dioxane purple, quinacridone magenta, titanium white, and cad yellow medium. I also have burnt sienna, and I have carbon black. For more information about the materials, check the description below or go to the website, theartsherpa.com. Let's get started on this awesome fun project. To get my bright green, spring green background, I take a little bit of my thalo green, and quite a lot of my yellow. I'm mixing these together with a tool called a palette knife, but you could use just a plastic spoon or anything that you have. It's not super critical to have this exact tool. I want the green to be very, very yellow. When I have a green that I think is very, very yellow, I'm gonna take some of it, like that much, over to my white and mix those two together. This gives me a couple colors that I can use right away to paint in the background. I'm gonna wipe off my palette knife, get my big brush, and I'm gonna come in to my jar of water. I'm gonna drag off the extra water. I don't want my brush to be soaked. I just want it to be damp. I'm gonna load it with paint. That's what it looks like. And I'm gonna very quickly paint in the whole background. When my paint isn't blending anymore, I'm gonna get a little more water and keep going until the whole background is painted. I can even get a little bit of that darker green on occasion to add some interest, but that is up to you. It's just important that the background be very bright. And notice I'm just going any way I want to on my brush stroke. I'm not worried. You don't be worried either. I'm gonna pull some more of this out, see the load? Here we go, super easy, super fun. You can do this. If you never thought you could paint, this is gonna be your moment when you discover you're pretty darn creative. That's kind of my whole goal in life. All right, when I have it where I like it, I'm gonna get a little of my white on my brush and blend in just a little bit white here while the paint is all still wet. If your paint's gotten dry, you can just do the background over again. Don't even stress about it because you can paint over acrylic paint with acrylic paint every time it's dry. I'm using a soft brush pressure, that's all it's gonna take for me to get that background in. Sketch in a quick guideline using some chalk. Come from the upper left, I'm gonna arc down, I'm gonna imagine where my branch and my flowers are gonna be and I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna come over here just above this branch about the halfway mark and make another little line out. That's gonna help me to keep in mind where my branches go because branches can be confusing. I've got my round number four. I'm gonna put out some of my brown paint and a little bit of my black paint. I'll load up my brown right on my brush and get a little of my black on there. But see how it's not mixed? And I'm gonna come in start painting in my lilac branch. I want it to be the whitest up here and then as it comes out it's going to get much more tapered. So you want it wide up here and then narrow as it goes down. As I come to the end, I'm gonna make this line very fine and end it right about here because I'm gonna have lilac there. Keep your branches tiny, small, and delicate as they come out from the main branch. Now I like to have three leaves because I think it gives balance. So I'm gonna come up here in the midway point, press hard, then release making it a very soft line. 
Come over here, get another soft line. Come right below this branch. Don't line them up because you don't want antlers. Come down and make another soft line. That's going to give me a place for three leaves. Rinse out your brushes. I put out my quinacridone, my Prussian blue, my doxine purple, and my titanium white. I'm going to take my number six bright. I'm going to get it a little bit wet and drag off the extra paint. And I'm going to take a smidge, just a smidge, of my quinacridone to my purple. I'm going to get some white on here. And I'm going to do a very interesting thing. I'm going to very lightly brush in, starting about an inch back from my lilac, soft little on the edge curving brush strokes with this light purple. I want it to be wide at the bottom. And then as I'm coming out, I'm going to taper it so it makes a cone shape. This is going to keep my Q-tips from looking like little dots and it's going to help me be successful with my acrylic paint. It's different to do these in different media, so this is what you have to do to make the Q-tip technique work for acrylic on these lilacs. I'm doing the same thing wide at the base. As I'm coming out, just getting my white paint, as I'm coming out, You'll see me reload off, and that's because I just want to make sure I have color. Right. I'm going to, I'm getting my brush wet. Just make sure that I have that nice cone shape. I'm going to rinse, 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 rinse my brush, and while I'm letting that dry, I'm going to get a little of my dark green and a little of my light green on my brush. I'm not really mixing them together. And I'm gonna come and I'm gonna make, I'm gonna curve on the edge of my brush, curving around, and then curving out to see that to that little flick. I'll do that on the other side, matching up. I'll paint my little leaf shape. Maybe get a little more of my green here. I don't want it to disappear into the background, so not too much. Let's get some more of your dark green. See it's all mixed up. Let's make another little leaf. Just a little leaf shape. See they're not hard. Maybe this time I'll get a little white on it. Wipe that off. See I'm just trying to get a mix of paint for my green. And come here and also flick that. So they all have kind of a curve to them. If your leaves get a color or don't be how you like, let them dry. I'm going to start with my biggest bunch of Q-tips and I'm going to make a very dark color. I'm going to take a little of my Prussian Blue. See, I'm wiping those around, coating those up, and a little of my Doxanine. This is quite dark, these two together. I have nice coating on all my little Q-tips. And I'm going to come at the base and I'm going to neatly dab using that shape I painted in as a guide. I'm gonna let some of it be lighter and some of it be darker. I'm squeezing down the bundle. And when I come to the edge, I might just go on the edge of it. So I've got that. Let's do the other one. Not hard, super fun stuff. Just pressing down these dots. This is gonna make a great gift for somebody that you love. This is gonna be really pretty on your wall. You can make these in a ton of colors. It doesn't just have to be these colors. Art is for everyone, every single person who wants to do it. I'm just making sure that it's staying tapered. When I have that, I'm gonna get another little bunch and I think what I'd like to have is some of my magenta. Make sure your Q-tips are all nice and even and touching canvas. I'm going to get a little of my purple. 
and some of my white. And I'm going to come on this upper side. Maybe a little more here. Just make sure you're getting the paint you want. I'm going to dab this at the top. That's where the sunlight's hitting. So that's a very enjoyable space. Come down here. I can move my Q-tips around to change the shape in the print that I might be getting. I'm going to get a slightly smaller bunch. And I think I'll get a little of my blue, a smidge of my purple, and a lot of my white on these. And I'm going to dab that this lower end. Isn't that fun? A little bit up there. I'm enjoying that. When I come to the tip, I might squish them together and press a little delicate tip out. Let's get some more of this. Almost done. Really, you're just taking it till you're happy with it. Now I'm going to get an even smaller cluster of Q-tips and I'm going to do some detail work. I'm going to get maybe some purple and white. Maybe more purple because I want to have some dark value in here too. Right there, coming around the bottom. This is fun. Just have fun. Sometimes you'll really hit it. Sometimes you'll be like, oh, it could be a little different. I don't know. Lilacs aren't perfect. and You don't need to be perfect. You just need to paint. Have some fun. Make something from your heart. So I'm pressing that nice pattern around. It just makes it really pretty. And then my last ones, I might get just a little of my white. Doesn't matter if some other little colors get on it. Maybe at the edge here, put a little of that for interest, like lilac has. Sometimes they get lighter at the tips. And you can take individual Q-tips and take colors as you want to make your little lilacs perfect, how you like them, how they please you. This is your painting, your garden. I'm using the dark colors. If you like pink, you could be like, no, pink is my favorite. You could come then and put some focuses of pink on. So there's just no, when I come here to the end, maybe I'll make them a little delicate coming out. A little delicate coming out. Isn't that fun? Feels just like a beautiful little bush. I hope you'll keep doing it. I hope this was a really fun, enjoyable, creative experience. I want to see you at the easel really soon. Check out theartsherpa.com and my YouTube channel for more great projects like this. Okay, bye bye. Mm -hmm.